Right in people's lips, those who wanted to ask questions. But again, if you have a question somewhere, just raise up your hand and we'll, we'll just forward the, the, the microphone to, to, to you. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Mr. Kater. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sala. And thank you very much for accepting our invitation to visit us here in Copenhagen. And I wish to also thank uh, the Gambian Society, the executive, the committee members, Mr. Mumudu Kamara and uh, Mr. Hendrik uh, Speck, the Gambian consulate, and all Gambians, friends and families. Mr. Sala, I have no question. You have answered most of my concerns. Uh, I just have comments, uh, word, and, and, uh, and uh, advice. And also, uh, I want to send a personal message to Mr. Barrow, or not personally Barrow, he is the head of state, of course, but the, the Minister of External Affairs, uh, which happened to be Mr. Usain Udawo, and the Minister of the uh, Diaspora also. Uh, I want you to, uh, for the first, you have emphasized on institutions. Before a country, before you build a house, the foundation has to be very strong. Laws, institutions have to be in place before any development can take place. That one I would like us to focus very much on those institutions. One, I am concerned about the, the involvement of the diaspora, as you have emphasized here, and uh, especially in Scandinavia. Because I can see that the foreign mission is only uh, 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 having their duties in uh, countries which we don't have so much in common. Cuba, for example, yeah. Venezuela, Malaysia, all these countries. In Scandinavia, we are here having children, grandchildren, and some are going to be having great grandchildren. And all these things, is, uh, all these people are potential for the Gambian development. I want you to convey our message to the, to the Gambian authorities that we want to establish institutions that can uh, facilitate, like you have said, our uh, connection with the Gambian development. Like uh, most of us are getting older here, we would like to do our part in the Gambia. We have young kids here who want to do their graduate studies in MRC, in in nursing schools, in the fields of farming. Uh, we want to build that bridge so that it will be easier for us. So in that sense, we want to, uh, Mr. Uh, not personally Mr. Henry, but the Gambian consulate here to be strengthened because uh, Henry has been helping us a lot financially. Maybe nobody knows, but I'm quite sure he has been doing his personal uh, uh, yes, uh, help uh, towards the Gambia. So I think uh, the Gambia now have to develop a good, establish, a good establishments so that we can be referring to Hendrik when we have such kind of opportunities to help the Gambia. And uh, it hardly is uh, regardless of, uh, I don't want to say that a lot, tribalism, we have to forget that and build up and know that we are all Gambians. Let's focus. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that is why the purpose of the trip is to build one institution that will help you to deal with all the other institutions. That your organizations must become much more structured. And all of you must accept that it is an instrument that can help you to have a leverage in promoting what is in your interest. So as of today, the Gambia organization in Denmark should accept to become more structured, more democratic, if it is not already uh, that democratic, so that you have a leadership and you can meet to 
consult the journal and you can make recommendation. Like the recommendation you've made now is a recommendation that has been made in most of these places that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora Affairs should really take into consideration uh, your concerns. And that concern, I am saying, you must articulate in a better way by meeting and establishing your concrete demands. What do you want? And then that should be conveyed to those of us who are National Assembly members, conveyed to the Council, to be delivered to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And there's absolutely no doubt that when I go back, I will also be pioneering that course, and I'll be meeting uh, any authority that is of concern to promote your course. That I will do. But it is important for you to become more structured so that you write formal petitions for consideration. That is important. Yes. Hello, Mr. Honorable Ali Pasada. My name is Amaru Wajidjalo. I don't have to go to what he said. We thank you again and thank the committee and all that. I don't have to repeat that again. My question to you is simply about the second in command when Yaya was there, Mr. Jambi, he left the country, you know. I guess many Gambians would like to have him somewhere in Gambia today. But the second person in command, who? The former vice president, I said from the IC. I, I just don't understand what is going on. This woman is in the country. What is going on? She is not arrested. She's just, she's just there. We have a lot of rumors in the con uh, here that this woman was so rich. Many people didn't like her. Compounds like 19, 18, it doesn't matter. But she's not under house arrest. What is going on? I mean, I have to interpret it in Mandinka or whatever, quickly. You know. But in Mandinka, Mininka, Honorable Halifa Sala, Molom Nintiko, Vice President of Mindy DMJ, I said, I see. Your <laughs> To your, to your information, I, I, what I'm telling you, that my jahal, the jahal not hundreds of Gambian tongues, thousands of Gambian, the 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 Gambian, Ono jawa no jipa no joki haju mako do no hilbi ni. Yeah, yes, sir. Huh? Kera kwa wabena nga tamu wa fiji. Mi anda kondu. What is going on? Just what is going on? Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 That if you can do justice to your opponent and enemy, you will do justice to all. But you should fear any leadership that does just injustice to its enemy. Because ultimately, the friends will be the casualty. So if you want a new Gambia, the focus should not be on the bad Gambia. The focus should be on building the new Gambia. And in the process, you will address whatever was wrong in the past.
there is a type of justice which is just simply propaganda. And there is justice that is substantive. You cannot be a president in the Gambia without declaring your assets. So what is important when Barrow took over, the starting point, his role is to protect your public institutions. I said, we made sure that everything was intact. So if a president takes over now, he has to do an inventory of national wealth and national assets. That is a priority. It means that all the public enterprises, you do an auditing so that they can document the wealth of the public enterprise, the assets of the public enterprise. You do that with all the institutions. And the Auditor General is to report to Parliament every end of the year, for, for the next financial year, every the, the, the financial year before <coughs> the end of the financial year. So once you have an end of a financial year, within six months, the Auditor General should give a report to Parliament <coughs> on the audited accounts. Of so that is what you need to follow in the first instance. Now, if there is a previous government and there are complaints, as you said, there are assets issues, compounds, etc., there is already a lands commission which is established by an act of the parliament. The previous government uh, had the act since 2007. If you are a new government, immediately you will appoint those who are going to be part of the commission. And if you have a complaint that a particular personality, whatever his name, has taken your compound or has a compound on this, well, then it's your duty to go and report to the commission so that that will be taken as a case and dealt with according to law. So if, if you believe that the person has misappropriated for public force, etc., etc., well, these are issues that comes into consideration if you believe as a government that the past government has done so many things that you need to follow in the interest of the public, then you can always establish commissions of inquiry, first declaration of assets, and then monitor the source of those assets. But you cannot start with hunting. You, and that, that means all. For example, the best thing for a government to, to even do is you declare your own assets first. Until everybody knows that you are clean, then you say let everybody declare their assets and then you can pursue it. But sometimes, pursuing individuals, the state will not end up getting anything from it. And then you will create so many confusion that people start running away, people start moving away, you know, so investors will start wondering what is really happening. So you end up destabilizing a state to a point that instead of the state moving toward development, you move towards more chaos. So therefore, it is the responsibility of every government to look at what methods you are going to do to deal with the problems of the past in order to move in the future. And that, the measure you're going to take must be according to international standard. It must be something that will enable you to build a human right climate, a business investors climate, an international climate so that they know that Gambia is moving in the right direction. Anything that makes you mix up and you start following, then know that in fact you are pushing Gambia backward rather than moving forward. So I would suggest that let us build the institutions and build the instruments and use the methods that are in line with proper standards to pursue anything as a start to move forward. I don't know whether I've answered your question. Mange Wadene. Reu Sudeme Benu Wichiko. The Fanek Chitiget. The Fanek and Ninjele Amdo Lubari Lunida. One day you eat a Mianget or Bess. 
pour le faire 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 pour moyenne su fekke ne ngour jël na ré liñ dëkk nek liggéeyam moy topato alal ci nga xamné mo duggé ci loxo mu xam lan la ak ñaata mu mëndi dañ am public enterprise social security ñu ñepp xamone nañ so lan daan jang ci foro ya won nañ social security for example jëndon na ocean b defarat ko 400 millions mu ngi jëndé yeneen hôtel et vous voulez que vous avez trois banques. Vous avez un peu de la social security. Vous avez un peu de quantité. 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 Vous avez So fonga audit ñu xamné li la nit né ki satché na li satché di wax rek ci jawaji su yaagé yow sax mu nga dem def leneen lo xamné li ken 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 du du awak yow ken du ci xam dara moy né auditing bi mo wax ci doorén bi xam gour gi yépp wax di ci jënal jurom bi né wër waxtu at mi passé ci biir doorén wër won na joxé audit audit report ci ci national assembly ñepp xamné alé li gour gi ni la ak né loolu mo wara ñëk jitu ñaaral ba itam su fekké né ay nit je ne sais pas si vous avez des choses à faire. 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 Vous avez des les gens qui ont fait des choses, ils ont fait des choses. 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 Ils ont Yoni Yangafa, Loa Yangafa, Ligen Chiriumi, Nako de Bega Kamne, Top Chiriumi de Nena, Defna Nu, Nina Kamitim de Nena, Defna Nu, Tinya Pudene Dako de Limo Jiriumi, de la Yoburumika, Lunda Moyni Jamsa. Wolle Munyen Tiko Banko Na Falet. Banco qui a la photo. Avez-vous si l'on est là? Mais il y a un yaton qui a ou le yata jive. Mais il y a un yata qui a si l'on est là, donc il y a un yaton qui a si l'on est là. Il y a un yaton qui a si l'on est là. Il y a un yaton qui a si l'on est là. Il y a un yaton Misal fi nga me fo social security nga mas misalo lem do e mo be ya lon ko safar la ya yitandi kabiri ko atele e oso be san ka kuto kuto yet an men dun taje dan sam yon ke bena e hotel dol fo nan santa trans bar fo nan social security du la jama bi de me ya lon ko social security kudo be je wato follow follow banko il y a un peu de temps, il y a un peu de temps, il y Loa Bidjé Meya Longo, comme en 2007, c'est un commando, à la date. Mais il m'a dit qu'il n'y a pas de commission. 
wato a kuma ya ta pour ni na ta fo ban kota e o commission on lundi mo mo me tu me ro ka eta ji kes ki zero ki me mo to ya te to ja esa mo kilin kinal me ya lon ko e tar no nya to ka ya la e ni la fi de pour ki tilin bi wa tu do a jatta pour ye no wa tu do ama je pour ke no ba e be me soto la je a te ban ko na fa a dum fa na wa tu do a ko mo je ja kali e sa je ko ban ko ye do nyot wo to pour be ban ko te ko ni e te le ba ji be le fo e be men no ma ka a be ban ko na fa na ban ko na fa isi asset evaluation ke mo be ya ye tande me ba bu me ya lon ko amantara ama soto a nyaal si loka isi wo bu si ya bu wo be ka ke ba de men ko ma ya ko ko ni ba tamande la aye tar si loka ko ko ni ba tamande la dunia be ya lon ko be si loka ko ko ni ya tamande fa na isi ke ko ti me ya lon ko abi ban ko te ko ni la ka samba nya ba wo me men bam bande ila jawo ni to nya tamande ala ko oto ela kante fana ma jenna sida wala hani ila jawo ni man to nya tamade ala ko oto hani ila kante nya te sila le ko nya te sini ya is 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 na ita oto wolum na ko oto next person is a motor camera i have a question regarding the coalition we all know that you were a part of the coalition that brought Adam, president adam abaro to power and he is a coalition president so now do you are in the parliament do you see yourselves there as an opposition or a coalition or part of the coalition government Yes, can I, can I, can I add into because okay. some people are sending questions. I mean, we have a lady here who wants to be an anonymous, and that's okay. He's also asking of the same question, sir. That is, you were part of the coalition, and then why did you quit everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, and, and the, the, the third one is, is, you were part of their spokesperson. Why are you not doing that now? So now we have seen questions of the same. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that question. First is taking over executive authority. It starts with winning an election and being a president elect. A president elect is not really a president, it's an incoming president. And at that time, I was a spokesperson of the incoming president and a spokesperson of the coalition. And that is why throughout the transition, I carried out that responsibility. But as soon as the president assumes office, then that president becomes executive authority. The unfortunate thing in the Gambia is that the president was in Dakar and therefore, by extension, uh, my mandate had to continue. But as soon as he steps into the country, then the duty was to appoint a cabinet. And when he appoints a cabinet, each minister becomes responsible constitutionally for each department that is put under his or her charge. So the role of the minister is to exercise direction and control over a ministry. And therefore, the minister and the permanent secretary, the technical advisor, become uh, the, 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 the people who should speak for that Department of State and to advise the president. So in short, then, as soon as he convened a cabinet, then I could not speak for the government. It is the ministers who should speak for the government in respect to their different ministries. The president uh, did <coughs> announce that I was appointed an uh, advisor, special advisor on, on governance. <coughs> we discussed about it. To be an advisor on governance means that 
you will be paid just like the ministers, etc. You will have the similar privileges. But looking at it, for me, I felt that paying you a salary to advise uh, is, is contradictory because it means that you know you have to give the advice that, that is expected, otherwise you will not be, be functional. And if you give an advice that is not adhered to, what would you do? The only thing you can do is to continue being there, uh, receiving money, and you are not really <laughs> delivering because your advice is not being taken, or you leave. So in short, uh, I'm not the type of person who would want to be in that situation. So I took the role of being a voluntary advisor, meaning any time he feels that I can give an idea that will be substantive, then I'm willing to do so. Anytime I see something, I can go and say, well, this is what I see, well, think about it. But then I do not take responsibility for his acceptance or non acceptance for actually uh, carrying out an advice. He becomes the person who is responsible. So in short, uh, I also could not take a ministerial position, me and uh, our colleagues, because a ministerial position restricts you to a ministry and you are equal to the other ministers. And cabinet is collective responsibility. One minister can do something and you don't agree with it, then what would you do? You will end up having to resign. You can give an advice, the president does not accept it, what would you do? You'll have to end up resigning. So to us, as soon as you establish the executive authority, it is the president who is the executive. All the others are advisors. He can accept you, can dismiss you. So uh, to us, we believe that by going to the National Assembly, uh, we, do not, we will not have a boss. <laughs> we will be our own bosses. Because our people will be our boss. So it means that there, whatever comes, I can analyze. And since you are just an advisor, if the president listens what you say, what he believes is in the interest of the nation, he will take it. And then he will, he will, he will implement it. And I believe that that has happened over and over again. If you look at the Kadilai incident, there are many things that I uh, said in the public space. Eventually, uh, you know, certain things went in a certain direction. This Barbote incident. So essentially, uh, I believe uh, to be independent in the National Assembly, analyzing every aspect of government performance is in a better position to be uh, than to be in the cabinet. And that's why I've taken that decision. Well, if you look at the whole situation, we can only end up with a blaming game. Uh, first and foremost, I must say that the National Assembly under the Gambian constitution, there is what you call the separation of powers. You cannot be a minister and a national assembly at the same time. And under section 112 of the constitution, what it says is that the national assembly member should put conscience and the national interest before any personal uh, interest. And should not seek to increase his or her work at the expense of the nation. So if you look at the role, really, you cannot put a partisan role to the National Assembly. You are there to examine bills and pass any bill that serves the national interest, examine international agreements, pass any international agreement that serves the national interest, call the ministers for questioning on any issue of national issue, national interest, and they must answer you. So you are there then as an oversight to see that the ministers do what they're supposed to do. And you can also be part of the committees of the National Assembly, which has the power, uh, which have the power of a high court that you can call any official in your own area of, uh, of, of uh, jurisdiction, and they will come and answer you to review what, what happens to government. So if it is done in the right way, you do not see the party differences. But of course, parties can take partisan position by instructing their National Assembly members to behave in this way or act in a given way, that is possible. But that you can only know by following the National Assembly and see how people vote 
and what they say to be able to judge whether now they are under the tutelage of a party or they are free to serve the national interest. So the National Assembly can function not as an opposition ruling party, but it can function as a separate institution safeguarding the interest of the nation, if it is done the right way. But the issue of party came into being because of our departure from what we thought was the agenda. Because for our party, we believe that President Barrow was made an independent candidate so that we have a transition that is non-partisan. Because Gambia had never changed for 52 years. So we thought we could give Gambia a new start by everybody working to build the structures, the constitution, the institution, the normative practices in, in, in administration, etc. So that everything will be shaped. The regulations, etc. The electoral system, the media, so that divergent views, dissenting opinion, so that nobody will see party anywhere. You just see a nation emerging and developing. And that would have required, during the uh, National Assembly election, to put up uh, independent National Assembly candidates. And if we had done that, obviously you will not see the dimension that you are now talking about. But because that was not done, obviously parties contested, and parties came to the National Assembly, and now you have a minority leader, a majority leader, and a minority leader whose uh, uh, party leader is in government, and then you wonder, is this minority, is this opposition? So uh, definitely it's a very uh, confused situation by virtue of uh, the decision we have made to stand as a parties, uh, whilst some are still participating in government uh, together. So it, it is an interesting situation. But it is unfolding, and uh, uh, clearly what I see is that in some instances, National Assembly members function independently. In some instances, well, they go back to maybe their party colors. But as we unfold, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Some people, I mean, I have two questions here. Some, some want to be anonymous, that's okay. But um, I have two questions here that are similar. So I'll just present them. I hope you can answer them before I can give the microphone to somebody else. Um, the first one goes to is like, is Barrow going to stay for five years or three years? And the second one that follows is that if Barrow fails to, 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 to step down after three years, what can the coalition do? Okay. Thank you. Well, I don't know why the person wants to be anonymous because these are not controversial questions. <laughs> I think if they want to hit me, that's when they should hit me. <laughs> they can hit me. Anybody can attack and say whatever. I'm very free. <laughs> so essentially, really, what uh, people must understand is what is a tactic and what is a constitutional requirement. For example, if we say term limit, two terms, that's not in the Constitution now. But by putting it on an election platform, you are guaranteeing to the people that this is what you are going to do. So in the next five years, one would expect a constitutional reform which will introduce a term limit of two terms. That's what an election platform is all about. When we met as presidential candidates, everyone had the potential to go there and campaign. But if we had done that, look at the results, only 19,000 difference. So if we had separated and went our different ways, there is absolutely no doubt that any reasonable Gambian will know that the incumbent would have stayed. <coughs> so therefore, the decision was a correct decision. But to agree, that is why we said that no party should take advantage of the change. Therefore, President Barrow will start as an independent presidential candidate. We also said that we don't want the person selected to entrench himself or herself. That is why, and we want the person to be an example, first example, that before the five years, the person will commit himself, herself, 
to the reduction of his term, voluntary reduction, to three years. So it's a voluntary action. Now for that action to be implemented, then that must be linked to a constitutional reform. A constitutional reform which is necessary even if President Barron wishes to serve more than three years. Because at this moment, if something happens to the president, who will be the president of the government? You. 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 No, 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 no. That's good. At this moment, if the president, something happens to him, uh, we don't want to mention what could happen to him. I think you understand. Uh, we cannot talk about if the person loses his life. That's not, in our culture, no one says that. But if something happens to him, the constitution, current constitution, says that the vice president should serve the rest of the term. But if there is no vice president, as now, there is no vice president. It is the speaker of the National Assembly who serves the rest of the term. Yes. That's true. So, which means then, we need to put in the constitution what was in the 1970 constitution. That is, if the office of president becomes vacant, within three months, you should have an election to the office of, of, of president. That must be incorporated in the constitution. So, if he comes to a time that he wants to abide by what we agreed, all he would do is to resign after three years, then we go back to election. So, that is what he could do. Now, the question is, will he? I don't know. Because it is all up to him, it's left to him to decide. Because he has five-year mandate, but he can opt to serve three years, and that could be constitutional if we amend the constitution and provide the provision that requires holding an election within three months if the office of president becomes vacant. Now, for us, that's what we think he should do. And we will advise him to do that, to be able to leave a legacy. But he may decide not to do that, and then he will serve five years, and then uh, we can establish two terms in the constitution, if he wishes again, he will be able to stand again to seek the mandate of the people and say that he will go for the two terms, all that is within his mandate to do, because there is no constitutional restriction. Now, what would happen if he goes for five, uh, to five years? Well, as far as we are concerned, uh, we will definitely not go in the street and protest that he should not serve five years. We will just say that, well, here is your president who promised this, and he has not done it. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's between you and your president. You know, that, that, that is, that's, I'm not saying the coalition, this is our position. Yeah. As, as Doyle, as Hanifa Sala, we, we don't believe that it's really an issue. We believe that it's an issue of integrity of a person and in negotiation and discussion. Uh, we knew from the very beginning that this were the risks. And we decided to take the risk because we wanted change. So to us, it really does not matter because we took the risk knowing that somebody else could end up being the presidential candidate because we felt that that was the means of tactics that we could employ to effect uh, regime change. Yes. The next online is Bobakari uh, by C. เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวมาเดี๋ยวนี่มาเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเดี๋
Il est une bête en Arlanda. Maman m'a bonne espagne, bête. Honnêtement. Quoi dire, mon gars, il est bête, il est femme nègre. Les gens qui ont été en train de se de Moyenne, jamais moyenne on doit aller chez Sophie Gambia. Mais t'as baronne que Sénégal. L'autre baron de Sénégal. T'es mon moyen président bien élect. Moyenne doit le réu fait que t'as pu vous le dire là-bas. Doit le réu moyenne militaire, policier, NAI. L'autre qui est mon bigar famille, mangi top fauve. Rajou vous madame du Tchadjo. Je ne sais pas si vous avez un dollar. Je ne sais pas si vous avez un dollar. Je ne sais pas si vous vous avez un dollar. Je ne sais pas si vous avez un dollar. Je ne sais pas si vous avez un dollar. Si vous avez des choses, vous avez des choses. 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 Vous avez des pour la jambe qui ne couvre pas mon nom de négocier c'est que par mon monde sénégal moi et président union à curie à tes nations vie 